Uh, okay, so I hope that I am now live. Um, just checking my, um, oops, on my phone, just to see if I'm live. It's got like a bit of a, um, like a delay, so it, oh, here we go. Excellent. Good, good, good. Uh, right, so hopefully you can all hear me. Um, I'm just going to put my phone there. So um, let me know if you can hear me. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll make a start. We'll make a start. So I'm just going to shimmy this over just a touch. I'm going to work on this second ear. It's going to be very similar um, to the first ear. Um, so we're going to do kind of the, the similar sort of thing, but um, it should be quite fun to do. It's a nice little woolly ear. So, uh, yeah, let me know that you can hear me. Um, and um, sounds good. Brilliant. I always worry about whether you can hear me or not. Uh, so I've got all my pencils in a little tiny tray. So oh, that's probably not the best of ideas, but anyway. So we're going to make a start. Fantastic. I'm going to make a start with um, Polychromos Dark Sepia. Hi, everybody. Hi, Alison. Um, good, good, good. That's great. Thank you. Uh, so we're going to make a start with the Dark Sepia. I'm just checking my fingernails are all okay. It's been very muddy here. If you've seen my um, Instagram post, um, slippers paw. Oh, my goodness. Slippers paws were so muddy. But no, my fingernails seem to be OK. So that's all good news. Um, so I'm going to make a start. I'm going to make a start and start to um, just with the dark sepia, uh, just bringing in sort of like a little bit of the form, really, a bit of, bit, bit of the um, sort of dark areas. Oh, I've got a bit of a bounce on there. Not sure why that is. Oh, well, it'll be fine. Um, so I hope you're all okay. Um, I've had a, um, a busy old busy old day today, as per usual. Um, I meant to do. So I have to. Uh, I have to hype myself up to do packaging, and I've got my new packaging, which I thought, oh, it, you know, it'll. I'll. I'll be. It'll make me excited to do packaging. It doesn't make me excited at all. I still really hate it. And um, anyway, I got out of going to the post office because I've run out of bubble wrap. So um, my, uh, my, my elephant piece went to its new home, um, it came and picked it up. And uh, yeah, I've run out of bubble wrap, so um, that was a shame, I couldn't go to the post office. So um, and that's coming tomorrow, so I'm gonna be going to the, uh, doing some postage tomorrow, which I just, oh, I can't, can't stand it. Um, uh, ba -da -ba -ba. Evening, hope that everyone is okay. Just listen along tonight as I'm so tired from spending all day most nights. Oh no, Joanne, that's not good. Ooh, that sounds horrible. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm glad it's all right now, but oof. Ooh, that makes me um that <laughs> makes me go all funny. Um, although I've had my fair share of I although I never I always used to fall off my horses, but then never just I'd never go to hospital, so I've got all sorts of things that's wrong with me. I keep on going for x rays and they're going did you know you've got um, uh, fractures all over your pelvis? And and I'm like, no. <laughs> so I've got all of these different things from accidents, from falling, or normally landing on my head, um, which wasn't very, uh, not very clever. But, oh, gosh, I'm glad they're okay. Hi, Joan. Hi, Zainab. Hi, Rob. Um, so that's uh, lovely to have you all with me. Um, and again, this is just kind of the boring bit, really, just kind of blocking in these colours. Um, I've got some um, I've got some fantastic pieces to draw on the drafting film coming up. Um, I'm actually missing using drafting film. I've been using the Lightfast and the Fabriano quite a bit. And um, I, I, I really do like them, but I'm re I'm very much looking forward to getting back onto pastel matte and the drafting film, I have to say. Um I've, I've, I really like the light fast paper. Um, I really rate it and I, and I would I would rank it among the top um, my favorite papers. However, um, it kind of it's kind of a little bit like blotting paper at times and I've 
I've sort of struggled a little bit with the polychromos, I have to say. Um, I'm using Lightfast just on the on Golden Retriever that I'm doing at the minute, but every time I come down in the morning, I'm like, where's my picture gone? <laughs> and it's sort of, um, it sort of all kind of fades a little bit, which is a, a, a touch frustrating, I have to say. Um, so I'm kind of working out really how, how the best way of using the Lightfast paper is. And I think the, the, the best thing to do is to kind of put quite a lot of pressure on the initial layer that I put down um, and, um, you know, kind of go from there. It's, uh, yeah, it's a bit, it's, I mean, it's, it's lovely paper and it is definitely one of my favourites and I much prefer it to the Fabriano, but it's that, it's a little bit like Stonehenge. Stonehenge used to do that to me as well. So I kind of need to work out what, what I need to do to sort of stop that happening. So I find I'm going over and over and over and over the same thing time and time again. Um, I'm watching to take my mind off my mouth. Oh no, Carol. Oh God, you're all ill to th this week. That's no good. <laughs> oh no, God, wisdom tooth. But I tell you what, Carol, better out than in. Um, my poor daughter really struggles with her wisdom teeth. And um, and I can remember me, I struggle quite a bit as well. So I, I, I think it's, um, the pain is probably worth it, I think. Um, you never fall off your horses. <laughs> oh no, oh no, that's so funny. <laughs> well, I do that as well. I tell you what I do, um, because I wear sort of like wide trousers quite a lot, and um, when I'm when I'm going upstairs, um, I get my toe caught in my trousers, <laughs> and I trip myself up at the stairs, and I'm like, I don't know how I haven't broken my toe countless times. <laughs> no idea but that's one thing that i do i keep i, I catch my toe in my trousers so <laughs> um hoping this gets me in the mood to draw battling the flu oh no everybody's poorly oh well we're gonna have to um we're gonna have to cheer everybody up aren't we i'm not sure how i'm gonna do that i'll tell some jokes i don't think i've got any jokes actually <laughs> um but uh, oh no oh well get get well soon everybody i hope you've got nice like hot chocolate and stuff like that to help you feeling a little bit better um oh i feel really sad for you all being poorly now i'm um i'm a bit of a i don't know i i do get poorly but i kind of i get poorly when i stop um you know sort of like at christmas and stuff like that you know when you kind of wind down a little bit that's when i get poorly so I, I have to keep going. <laughs> um, question, Horsewoman2000, why do you use Duralar? Um, well, uh, I really like Duralar. I've done quite a few tutorials on Duralar. And actually, it's great if you want to use heat. So if you were going to use drafting film on uh, something like um, an Icarus board or something like that, um, and an Icarus board, for anybody who, who doesn't know, is it's this amazing big board that's hot basically it's like a it's like a massive hot plate um and you kind of uh, put your paper on there and melt your pencils um or melt the uh, the wax in the pencils and it's it, it's it's incredible and if you put normal if i put this film on it it would uh, kind of warp a little bit but the the duralar is really really good and heat resistant so that's one good reason to use it um, another good reason to use it is because um, the graphics drafting film is, is, is you can't really buy it at the minute. There's, I don't know what's happened. The production has finished, stopped or something because of um, the virus and everything. So that's another good reason for using it. Um, it is quite, um, it, it can be a little bit frustrating because it's quite smooth. It's smoother than the drafting film. Um, and if you use your eraser on it too much, um, you, you can kind of take the surface off a little bit. But um, I, 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 I like it. I like it for texture. Um, you know, and I like any drafting film for texture. It's really, really flexible surface to work with. Um, and it's like going on holiday. If you've been working on pastel mat or, or even a hot press paper, it is like going on holiday and sitting with a cocktail on the beach because you, you kind of don't have to really make any effort to put a mark down on the paper. It just goes down on the paper. So, um, you know, that's a really good that's a really good reason for using film. Um, what makes you choose drafting film over? Oh, so what would make me choose drafting film uh, would be texture. So the this the texture in here 
is just perfect for drafting film because you can use your eraser on it you can use the knife really really effectively on it um and it's it's a it's quite a lot speedier uh, for this sort of thing not that it's particularly speedy but you know um speedier than something like a pastel mat or a hot press paper it's 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 a really really lovely surface to work on i have to say um and if you like to use the sort of subtraction method then um it works brilliantly really really well for that uh you know and you can kind of use mixed media on it as well so i've used the um uh the neo pastels on it um the oil pastels on the back worked really really well uh yeah it's just a really nice surface right so i'm just going to switch to oh gosh they're all like in a big a big pit now in here the warm gray i've got the warm gray for five here um hi cheryl seriously you can't tell today took her to school and she ran straight oh gosh oh i'm glad she's feeling all right hi daryl when using drafting film, do you have to put acid-free paper when you're finished? Yes, you do. Uh, yes. So it's important that, um, you know, anything that you back it with uh, is archival and, and acid-free, um, you know, because it will it will have an effect on it, um, you know, later in its life. Um, you know, so it's always best to do that. I tend to use, um, or my framer tends to use just a, a normal a mount board that's, that's acid-free um hi tina hi luana hello thought i was the only person who tripped themselves on their pants Lindsay, honestly honestly it's it's madness <laughs> one of these days i'm gonna end up coming down the stairs i tell you dreadful <laughs> um what makes you use different papers rather than sticking to one paper that you like um well at the moment because i do uh, a lot of tutorials and i teach a lot I'm using quite a lot of different papers so that I can um, I can kind of work towards all my students' wants and needs, I suppose. Um, and also, I, th I do think it's quite good to... It's like with the, the drafting film at the moment, it's in really, really short supply. If you, if you can only draw on drafting film... Um, you kind of scuppered with when something like that happens and it's go and it goes out of stock because it's like oh you know but if you can kind of train yourself to be able to work on lots of different papers which i haven't done in the past and it's only recently that i've started to really really ramp up using different papers and it's it's tricky but it's it's really enjoyable actually um i've just spat on my film now it's attractive isn't it um you know it, it is quite tricky but um I'm I'm glad that I use lots of different papers because it means that I'm 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 kind of developing my own skills as well, which is something that's very important to me. You know, development has always been important for me. So at the moment, it looks like I'm literally just filling this ear in with grey, um, which which of course I am, um, just filling it in with grey, uh, and and I will be uh, coming in with the eraser in a minute and just. Um, uh, creating some sort of little textury bits and stuff my outline is on the back of the film so i can i can rub that out at any time but um yeah i'm just i am literally just 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 coloring it in gray um yeah so um dead easy just color it in gray uh so uh, yeah yeah that's why that's why i sort of like choose different different papers um, you know, just to kind of give myself a, a little bit of a, a challenge, really, to learn different things, learn different techniques, and it means that I'll, I can, I can help more people, I suppose, as well. Um, you know, which is, um, which is always good. Uh, what have we got here? Uh, hi, Catherine. Oh, you've got a joke. A Roman guy walks into a bar with his friends, holds up two fingers, and says, "Why?" <laughs> I like that, Wilma. <laughs> Yeah, I get and I get it as well. I'm not just pretending to laugh. I actually get it. <laughs> um, fell down the stairs 12 years ago into my, down my studio. And now we're going, oh, no. Oh, 12 days ago, not 12 years ago. Oh, blimey. Claire. <laughs> um, do you do many commissions on film? Yeah, I've done a few, uh, quite a few commissions on film. It's um, What I tend to do is if I've done something on film, if I've been working maybe on like a tutorial or something like that, and I and then I 
I come to do a commission if um, a lot of the time I'll carry on on the film and I'll, I'll, I'll do the two the uh, the commission on the film just because it's easier to, to kind of you know if you've been working on one paper it's easier just to kind of dive in on the same one um, oh <laughs> hi Susie uh, hi Hazel hi Simon um, that's a problem. I'm having no drafting film, so throwing at the deep end, having to use Fabriana. Ooh, Lorna, yeah. I, it's, it's, I, I, I've done a few tutorials on the Fabriano now, and it's okay, but I wouldn't say it's my favourite paper at all. I find it quite, um, I find it a little bit irritating. And I'll tell you the other thing that I find as well. Um, people all of the time talk about uh, pastel mat eating your pencils, and it's like, oh my goodness, pastel mat eats your pencils, blah, blah, blah. I can tell you now that I have never sharpened or used so many pencils as I have when using a hot press paper. Uh, it's utter madness. Um, I, it's just, I've used so much of my pencils um, using the Fabriano because you just have to keep um, sharpening your pencils. It's a, it's, so it's not, it isn't um, pastel mat at all. It's hot press paper. Choose your pencils up. Um, is it only pastel mat where you can put good white? Uh, Janice, it's anything that's got like a really good tooth. So um, a sanded paper, anything that's got a good a good amount of tooth, you know, you'll be able to get um, your white over dark, yeah. Um, so I'm just coming in with my little Tombow here. So if you haven't seen one of these before, this is the Tombow, Tombow Mono. Um, and it's like a, it's a two point, three millimeter little eraser at the end i've got quite a few erasers hanging around actually um i've got another tombow and what's the other one i've got oh i've got this one here which is is actually proving to be incredibly good um this is the derwent one it's got a little brush on the end this one is amazing on the light fast paper like honestly fantastic on the light fast paper so i'm using this one an awful lot on the light fast paper and then these are my two little tombos so i've got one that's sort of like the obloggy shape and then one that's the little round one um but i'm using the t the tombow on this one and then i'll get the um the slice tool out as well um so i'm just sort of uh adding to by taking away um, and I, I really, really love this sort of technique where you, you kind of put your pigment in and then you draw in the, uh, the highlights and everything with an eraser. Just it works really, really well. And my brush, if anybody's interested in my brush, um, it's a blusher brush that I stole from my daughter. So you don't need anything fancy. I think Faber-Castell do one for about £300. That's a lot. I don't think it is £300, but it is quite expensive um but you don't need anything fancy you know just just sort of like a, a blusher brush from from amazon or something like that you know it uh, works really really well right so we've got a little bit of on the top there just bring in a bit of and i find the polychromos um erase really really well i, I do find that polychromos are, are the best pencil to to use for subtraction techniques because you can kind of temper your um, pressure with your eraser uh, and you can sort of lift up just a little bit or you can lift off loads um, if I was using luminance here as soon as I put the eraser on the luminance a whole lot will come off um, you know just because of how the the it's a it's a waxier pencil it's just how the, the pigment works really Right, so we're just getting in there. I'm going to go in there as well with my um, with my slice tool in there too. So I'm just getting some nice texture in. As soon as you can get some nice texture in and some uh, some sort of like uh, patterns and texture and everything in, uh, it means that you can start to build depth. So you can see here we're now starting to get a feeling of this is way back. This dark bit here is way back. These bits are kind of on the top. We've got a little bit of um, layering going on. So we're starting to get an actual feel for the hair, uh, you know, which is quite nice. And as I try to get to this stage quite quickly because it, it really, really helps my brain to figure out what it is that I'm doing. And once I can see that something's working, 
uh, it's an awful lot easier for me than to kind of carry on um you know because you it, it's just yeah it's i think it's the depth i think it's getting the depth and that sort of structure and everything in quite quickly that just really really helps so what have we got here da, 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 da. finally i'm sharpening the pencils more with yeah it's mad um fabriano gobbles up the pencils i know it's it is yeah the derwent's really the derwent um erase is really good cheryl actually i agree really struggle with fabriano i've now gone back to pastel matte board oh it's gorgeous isn't it i love pastel matte board um do you find the brush smears the pencil no not on the film no it doesn't on the film um you don't use the uh, brush on pastel matte uh, because it will um and i use it on the hot press paper as well and it's fine so no it doesn't doesn't tend to now if you've got a really 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 dark area if you put a ton of layers on you've got a dark area you might want to be a little bit careful but uh, no i don't find it does oh a, a pound daryl <laughs> um started the cat face on fabriano i hate it oh gosh I work mainly on graphite and I've found the change to colour pencil. Oh, Pat. Well, um, if you need any help, please just uh, message me. You're welcome to send me a photograph, um, uh, you know, of what you're doing. And if you wanted to have a chat, you are very welcome. We can we can get together and have a chat through. I, I think coming from graphite to colour pencil is, is going to have its challenges. Well, anything moving from one medium to another. Um, because you'll be you'll have all of your muscle memory from using your graphite um, you know but don't um, don't despair and don't sit there weeping or anything you know g give me a give me a call or send me an email and and I can help um, you know um, I've been drawing animals for 27 years and only ever used two types Bockingford and Saunders so once I finish my going to try some, ooh that's nice now I've got some Saunders I think I've got some Saunders on it it's I don't know oh maybe I haven't I can't remember what I've got but I, I it had a funny it had like a funny texture on it which is a bit weird um how do you keep what do you keep under your well Nicole for this one I haven't got anything what I should have is a piece of glassine paper really uh sometimes I use tissue or I use another piece of film or um a piece of um some sort of paper um I've got some I think I've got some Bristol vellum next to me here so yeah you should always have something underneath um definitely uh right so I'm going to flip flip this over and I'm just going to erase these lines here. So I'll just flip my film over. So you can see there. So I'm going to take these lines out in there. And I'm going to take this line out here. This is just the putty eraser that I'm using here. So I'm going to take that line out there. And then I'm just going to gently take out this line so that I can still see it a little bit. And down here as well. Okay, and then I'm going to flip that back over. So I've got a piece of um, uh, Bristol uh, it's 500 plate behind. It's probably worth an awful, an awful lot of money. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I've got a piece of plate behind this. Um, now, what did I do with those now? That. Right, so I'm going to put a little bit of black into here now. Um, it's going into here and into here, and then I do. I want to use some. Um, uh, why do we need to go up here a bit? I want to use some um, some of the slice in here as well. We get going with that and then i wanted to as well tonight just chat about the um golden retriever fur um because it's there's so many different variations of golden fur you know you've got like the pinky you've got orangey you've got like really really pale you've got really quite dark um you know so i just wanted to kind of talk a little bit about that as well um Oh, and I've got my cat prints. I'm all set up now with um, print on demand. So that's um, really happy about that. 
so um, I don't have to do any of the fulfilling or posting or anything so people can order the cat prints from me and I can um, and that's it I don't have to do anything else so that's all cool so I'm getting all of that set up I've got my my um, working on a, a, another new website <laughs> um, uh, but a kind of a bit of a different one so we've got all sorts of things going on at the minute Oh, and I've got myself the most fantastic production tool as well, which I'm um, very, very, very happy to be using. Um, so I'm using Trello now, and I've got all of my different projects that I've got on the go on there, and it means that I can have the people who are helping with different product, uh, projects. Um, you know, we can all kind of, it's all visible to everybody. Um, it's amazing actually it's one of those things that sort of you know the you kind of have like a bit of a life-changing thing <laughs> well it, this is a bit of a life-changing thing this trello because it means i've got everything there i can i can um you know put images in there i can save links in there everything it's fantastic and i can send messages to people it's brilliant so that's been um that's been very exciting and then I've also got my, um, I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be going out very, very soon, but recruiting my first um, employee, which is a bit exciting, a, um, an assistant. So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a bit scary, but um, I, I think I'm just going to have to bite the bullet really and, uh, uh, and do it because I, I just don't have enough time. Uh, to be able to do what I want to do and I've got so many different plans and things coming up I need I definitely need some help so so that's going to be exciting um, just coming in here and just bringing in these little I'm using really 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 light pressure here just sort of bringing in these little um, shapes and with the with the drafting film it's quite nice because you don't have to kind of go full on with the um, with all of your details um, you know because you can you can sort of it's almost like faking the details really with the drafting film because you can just sort of put some darks in there lights in there you know whiz a few lines out with your with your knife and you've got some really lovely looking fur so what have we got here do 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 Oh hi Paul, nice to nice to see you. I've got um, I must say I've got your uh, your live draw um, um, saved for tomorrow. I'm hoping to join you tomorrow night. So um, if anybody wants to watch um, a fabulous artist, I don't know what you're going to be doing, Paul, but oils or something. Have a look at Paul um, Paul's YouTube, Paul Lapp's YouTube, and I think he's going to be doing a live draw tomorrow. So I'm hoping to kind of catch that. Um, is baby Nelly's foot better? No. Well, you wouldn't guess that she had anything wrong with it. And, and she's the size of a mammoth now. Uh, she's got her next um, x-ray um, next week, Thursday. So um, we, sh we shall see what happens. But she's not, she's not allowed to go for walks. I mean, she races around the house and everything. She's like a little fat brown rocket just shooting around everywhere. Um, but uh, she's not allowed to go for walks and she's not allowed to go to the dog park so we've been taking the other dogs to the dog park because Vinny needs to run around um, and um, I think you know we, get, we feel a bit sad for poor Nelly because the, the other dogs come back all happy and you know we've been to the dog park and you haven't type thing so I'm sure they don't do that well they probably do actually but um, yeah I feel a bit sad for her bless her she's not even been in the garden the back garden she just goes out the front you know to to go to the loo and everything but um yeah i feel a bit sad for her really poor baby nelly um do, do, do. hannah Muller nostalgia paper is in the fabriano i'm just about to yeah i don't think it is i think it is mark mark it definitely is easier than the fabriano i prefer the um hannah Muller. I prefer the light fast over the Hannah Mula and the Fabriano, but I think the the, Hanna, the nostalgia is nicer than the Fabriano. Do you draw anything other than mammals and birds? Oh, that's interesting. So I've um, no, I haven't drawn anything other than uh, than mammals and birds, and and I have I have got some ideas for um, f uh, fish. 
So I'd really like to draw one of those, are they, is it called a fighting fish? You know, the ones that are really, really, really brightly coloured. I'd really like to do one of those. Um, and I'd not that it's, I mean, it's another mammal, but I'd really like to do a dolphin as well. Um, but I was waiting to use the Icarus board for that because um, I think that would be that would work really well do sort of like an underwater scene using the Icarus board because um, that kind of is going to you know relate really really well to those fantastic smooth textures um, so um, but yeah the fighting fish and I'd, I, I've I tried to get some photos of some um, koi carp but it, it, the photos didn't turn out very well so I'd, I'd quite like to do those as well um, it's just getting round to everything, isn't it? Bonnie, when you frame the drafting film drawings, I know you take the top, but do you have to mat it also to keep away from the glass? Um, yeah, uh, yes, yes, you would definitely put a mat on it. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, my framer wants to heat mount my drafting film. I'm guessing this is not a good idea. Best to just, no, don't let him heat mount it, Caroline. <laughs> yeah, just a couple of hinge mounts. Yeah, absolutely. What do you use for print? Oh, um, Hannah, I am using a company called Klein Imaging. They're based in Manchester. They are part of the Fine Art Guild. So you get all of the certificates, um, you know, all of that type of stuff. They're, they are approved by all of the Hannah Muller, Canson. Um, I can't remember who else, but they're all they're approved by all of the papers. Um and that's who I'm using. They haven't got an automated system, so I can't kind of set it up on my uh, on my website, which is what I was hoping to do. They have got one that's that's being created at the moment. Um, but actually, the process is really easy. You get the order, you put the information on a spreadsheet, a shared spreadsheet, and that's it, done. Um, you know, and then they do everything, and they they ship uh, overseas, they ship in the UK, they do different shipping. Uh, next day 48 hours that sort of stuff um and you can and they'll they can you can um you can have it all branded with your stickers and you know all of that type of stuff so um and their their customer service seems to be very very good certainly got a, a very quick response and i got it all set up within the day so that was great um you know so i'm, I'm quite pleased with uh, with how it is um you know and I've, I've put quite a few in quite a few orders in so um yeah and it just means that i'm now not having to sit wait for prints to arrive and then package them all up um you know because that's just a waste of my time really claire cat prints are 40 pounds i think 40 plus seven pounds 48 postage i think it is um yeah for an a4 uh found what did you say trello trello yes caroline trello it's t-r-e-double-l-o and it's like um, a project management um tool it's excellent um i'm really really happy with it it's it, it because i write a load of stuff down on different you know books and all of that type of stuff in a diary and a in a pad all of that um and and things just get lost this way everything's all in the same place all of my imagery's in there i can attach emails to the you know so everything's all in the same place it's um it's brilliant and then i can have um i can invite people the people who are sort of helping me with different projects i can invite them as well this is the cold gray two that i'm using here just down the, the edge here um so it's um it's it's brilliant for me because I'm so chaotic and that's that's one of the things that I'm I'm doing at the minute I'm trying to um I'm trying to streamline everything because of my chaos um you know I work I work well in a chaotic environment <laughs> I try to be very very organized and it just doesn't work but um I feel that you know the the where I'm going and where I want to go with my um, with with my art business, I need to be far more organised, um, and I'm just not. Um, was listening as I drove home. Now, can you show the don't want to raise it? Yes, Patsy. Of course, it's this one here. So it's I think it's one of their new ones actually. It's just the Derwent pencil eraser. Um, it's a bit looks a bit scabby at the end because I've 
I've sharpened it and then I've kind of hacked off with a little bit of the wood but it's really really good it's really good um I've just ordered some nostalgia paper oh brill yeah that's fine it's the 190 gram one yeah Carol it is a little bit thin but it's fine um oh yes um g ben yeah good that's good that you've found his channel um poor nelly i know she loves to, she really does love to run around yeah i think they're the fighting fish i think they are uh change the monday all oh, right okay <laughs> well, I, I won't be doing the friday one now uh i'll be there on monday um uh i don't know what a better fish is i'm gonna have to have a look at that i'll have to have a look at a better fish um uh, ba -da -ba -ba. who's doing your print on demand lisa i'm using a company called um i think i probably just answered this and you've heard it uh, it's um it's called um klein klein imaging k-l-e-i-n um imaging and they're based in manchester but they're all online but they've um yeah impressed with them and i can have my own um if i'm doing um limited edition prints i can have my own certificates of authenticity with my own stamp and everything on it so i quite like the idea of that uh you know so and with them being part of the guild of fine art that's that's quite important as well so yeah so i'm quite happy about that so again just using the cold gray too just to come run down the edge of this ear here just get a little bit of something in and then i'm going to bring a bit of color in um bit of the I think I'm gonna use the burnt ochre. Yeah, that's it. What are your five favourite brands? Uh pencils or any brand? Uh five favourite pencils. Oh right, the f uh, so probably favourite colours, yeah. Um okay, so favourite colour currently is um Persian orange. Um which is There we go. That's the Persian orange, the light fast Persian orange. That is the most fabulous orange in the whole world. Um, you don't need any other orange but than that. So I love Persian orange. I love the um, the luminance um, sepia fifty. That's a really really awesome um, pencil. Uh, buff titanium, luminance buff titanium. Um, that's three. Uh, warm grey too that's an awesome one for pastel matte that's four um, um, oh gosh what would number five be um, do you know I think it would have to be um, raw umber 10% luminance um, I think those those are really 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 awesome pencils I think all right let's just get a little bit of this oranginess into here as well and then I want to start to bring in a little bit of the slice in there so that we can get some of that texture in like we had on the other ear just sort of slapping the color in really I'm using really really light pressure um, just to kind of get some of those it's, it, we're trying to get the softness really I, I guess but then I'm going to use the eraser in there to kind of bring out some of the texture in there just bring a little bit of that into there as well and then let's have a little bit of that in there and then um Trello sounds ideal for Maison Talbot. Honestly, Caroline, it, I really like it. I really like it. Um, Faber Castell and Prismacolor both in the same drawing. Oh, I don't tend to use Prismas. Um, and the only reason I don't tend to use Prismas is because they're just a little bit too soft for me. Um, saying that, they are brilliant on the Durala, um with heat. You know, so if you want to kind of get some, um, if you're w working with heat, either with a hairdryer or an Icarus board or another heat board. Um, the the uh, Prismas work really, really well because they're so waxy. Um, but I don't tend to use Prismas uh, an awful lot because they're too soft for me. I prefer a, a harder pencil, really. Um, 
light fast earth green Ooh. do i overuse the faber castell yes i've got the pink one the perfection pencil that's another really good one a pink one uh, for colored pencil does anyone have the names of the four new luminance portrait pencils still with so the four new ones are let me see if i can get this right is the dark flash the dark flash 40 percent and I think the Dark Flash 5%, but that might be in the actual portrait set. And then there's a, a weird green, I think. Um, there's there's somewhere that, if you Google it, that you'll you'll be able you'll be able to see exactly which ones are um, are the the separate four. I'm just going to get this back in here actually because that should be dark in there. Not that it really matters. Um, but the dark flash is a super super color in fact the dark flash is very similar in color to the light fast mars black and that's another awesome color right okay so let's get some um ba -da -ba -ba. let's get some slicing in here i think that's quite a sharpish one. Where's that one sharpish? Which one's the sharper one? That one, I think. Right, so I'm going to take my slice tool. Um, this is the manual pen cutter that I've got here. And it's got the, the orange button that you can kind of do it manually, retract it manually. Um, like I said before last week as well, you can see the little notches there. If they're lined up like that, you tend to get a little bit of a wobble on your blade. So just sort of twist it to the side and then your blade becomes really um, secure um, and then what I tend to do is I hold it upside down and then move it to the left if you're left-handed you hold it upside down and move it to the right because you want to be scraping from the edge not not cutting you want to be scraping um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm just going to start scraping actually I'm just going to start putting some um, and you can see how easy it is to get those lovely it's a bit, bit tricky going this way but and just sort of I don't know what's going on out there oh it's my computer making that noise <laughs> thing it's been completely uh, trying to edit all of the 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 lookout the cat the sitting cat video oh my word i put a um edited a a, a big one last night and 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 uh, set it off uploading um and it was still uploading this morning which was fine and then i i for some honestly i do such stupid things i um I closed my computer down while it was still uploading. <laughs> so I've had to upload it all again. But I split it into two this time because I think it was four hours, which was just, it was too, that was too long. But I, um, that's the big thing about if you get into video editing, that, you know, the uploading side of stuff um, and editing is really, really, um, you know, it takes a huge amount of power for my computer. You know, you need to have quite a, a, a beefy computer. So you can see here, this is starting to work really nicely. Um, and this is almost the, the sort of like the um, the opposite of the indenting, um, you know, where you kind of go in first and do your indenting. This one, you're kind of taking it out. And what it does is it does, it does actually leave a mark on the, on the film. So that when you come to put your pe your pencil back in, it kind of skips over the hairs, so you get all of the gorgeous texture, and that's what I really really like drafting film for, all of this lovely lovely texture. You know, like woolly things. Um, it's just brilliant. And you can see I'm just gonna you know speeding through it. So what have we got here? Um, someone is selling the set. Um, oh, is that for the Charismas? Did you mention any of the Derwent drawing pencils as faves? 
Oh, I didn't, Cheryl, actually. Um, the Dermot drawings are fab. Um, the, the, the black, the white, they are really, really good pencils, but they're not, I wouldn't say they're my absolute faves, but I, they're definitely, definitely worth, um, worth having. Not in my top five, anyway. Um, top five is a bit tricky, actually. You know, your top five, um, favourites. I feel guilty. Um, leaving all of the others out. Um... What do you record in, Bonnie? Oh, so I actually record, or I was recording. I was like, oh, brilliant. I'll record in 4K because I've got the facility to be able to record in 4K. Fantastic. Let's record in 4K. And then you record in 4K and then you go, oh, crikey, my files are absolutely gigantic. <laughs> and does it really make a difference between 4K and HD? No. So I've gone down a couple of... Um, sort of stages and i'm recording in hd but not 4k the file sizes are huge absolutely huge um so <laughs> i think one uh, two hour uh once rendered and um ready to upload onto um vimeo or or youtube or whatever once rendered a a one and a half hour video is around about 11 gigabytes i think um it's the the you know and all of the files that have gone into that that's kind of compressed it all all of the files that have gone into that are just they're just huge and i think that's that's one of the reasons or that's that's something that puts a lot of people off doing the recording because the um you know, you, you do need a huge amount of space, you know, to be able to store your videos and everything. Um, yeah, it is. It's lovely, isn't it, Deborah? It is. It is a really, really nice surface to work on. And like you say, you can just kind of erase and start again, which is um, which is great. Right, so let's just come down into here. You can see there where I'm taking my pigment off. Add a zero to the top five, your birthday set, exactly. <laughs> okay. Yeah, 400 pounds is an awful lot for some pencils, isn't it? So I'm just again just kind of bringing in the um, the little textures in here. I've got a nice sharp um, slice tool, and I'm just really using it like a pencil, I guess. I think you've got to be quite confident as well when you're doing stuff like this. I think you've just got to go for it, um, you know. I think when you first start out, it can you can be a little bit tentative, and then it's like, oh, we're just going to go for it now. Right, so let's now start to bring in a little bit more pencil into there. Uh, would you be taking your pigment off like this on any other papers? No, Gina, uh, not like this. Um, uh, this. Uh, this is how I use um, the subtraction technique on the on the film. Uh, you know, I kind of use the, the the slice tool a lot, and that's kind of one of the main, especially for uh, when you've got a lot of texture like that in here. Um, but if I was using, say, if I was doing this here on, say, Fabriano or on Pastel Mat, I, I wouldn't be using the slice tool at all i'd be using my pencils i'd be using erasers i may be using now that i'm sort of you know getting into the indenting i may be sort of like indent a little bit so that you get these hairs kind of coming through a little bit like what's happening now where you're putting your pencil down and it's kind of skipping over the lines that we've put in but i wouldn't necessarily use the slice as i'm using it on the film here um it's the, on the film the slice tool works 
amazingly well for textures like this it just works so so well um, but it doesn't work the same on papers you can still take it off but it just doesn't have this same effect um, you know you've got to be quite careful on some papers that you're, you don't actually use the slice tool on the paper you take the pigment out but not the um, you don't touch the paper now where did I put that grey I've got so many pencils in my in my tray so this is just the warm grey five that I'm bringing in here and you can see I can go a little bit darker and I can start to get a little bit of tonal differences in there as well and we can still kind of pick up on those um, the texture and everything that we put in there and then we can bring the eraser in as well and start to kind of bring in those other little bits of um, texture in there um, I started your tutorials book for choice I've gone a bit rogue and added oh Deborah that sounds amazing <laughs> I love it when 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 things go a bit rogue and it turns out incredible oh I, well do share it I'd love to see that I love the thought of that. I've got a um, a friendly frog uh, that that well, actually, I'm terrified of it. <laughs> Only because it's it sits outside in the dark. So when I go out at night and I take Nelly out, um, go out into the front garden, and um, there's this blooming frog, and and it just and it sits on the on the doorstep, um, and I keep my um old sort of walking shoes and everything on the doorstep and i'm i'm absolutely terrified that this flipping frog's going to get in my shoes so i have to kind of do a bit of um shaking my <laughs> shoes around to make sure it's not in there and then so there's this frog and then um i went out was it last night the other night and there's a baby frog a tiny weeny 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 little baby frog and we've got no water around us so i can only think that they've um i don't know where they've i don't know where it's hatched from but uh, I can only think it's sort of like been in, there's like a bit of a rockery at the edge of the garden. Um, I'm saying there's a bit of a rockery. There's a few, there's a pile of stones at the edge of the garden. Um, and I think this frog's been living in there. But um, yeah, so uh, I'd love to see your, um, your hedgehog and butterfly. That sounds really good. Um, Bonnie, can you, oh gosh, Jill. Um, so... This is a real problem. So with me moving on to Vimeo, and the reason I've moved on to Vimeo is because um, my exclusive videos for Patreon are, can actually be um, copied and viewed and everything by people who aren't patrons, which I, I you know, I, I can't, I can't really have that. I do, I do enough for free, and I think people who are paying for exclusive content need to get exclusive content, and that's the reason why I um, swapped over to Vimeo. Um, and um, the 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 issue there is that if I want to put subtitles on my uh, videos, I have to um pay quite an awful well a lot of money per i think it's per minute um to have the subtitles created so i've been looking into it um and it's just i i, I can't afford it to be honest um it's um and you have to kind of run get this software run your video through the software to get the um subtitles and then um uh, upload it all uh, uh, you've got to upload two different files it's really really complicated and it's and it's wrong you know vimeo should um support uh, uh, subtitles and you know and captions they should support that uh, uh, you know and it's really 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 frustrating i have to say because it, it's yeah it's just really frustrating so i am looking into it and i'm looking into how i can create them but at the moment it's a it's a time thing and it costs i can't remember how much i think it was something like oh it was something crazy per minute um you know and of course i've got like hours and hours of video footage um you know so i am looking at it and i do understand your frustration 
um, you know, so hopefully I'll be able to come up with some sort of a solution for you. Um, Bonnie, the blade on your slice tool seems to be a lot further out of the handle than yours. Um, let's have a look. So mine is... Comes out that way. Comes out that far. I don't suppose it really matters as long as you can as long as you can use the blade I don't suppose it really matters how far it comes out there might be some that are slightly different so um, yeah just using the um, the Tombow here just to bring in a little extra wooliness into the ear here and what you'll find is I've got a piece of paper on the side here where I just take off that extra bit of pigment that gets stuck on there because then it it kind of goes a little bit slick and doesn't want to take anything off you've got to you've got to go quite hard as well sometimes um, with your pressure just to get that sort of um, woolly feel in there um, I just wanted to say Bonnie I'm halfway through the sumo book <laughs> oh Jackie it's fantastic isn't it almost life-changing I, I know exactly what you mean i recommend it, to, it is the most brilliant book um and he's written another one that i i bought and then it and then it got lost on the way here and i haven't i haven't um um got around to ordering it again um and, and it's called uh, confidence or something i don't know but it's written by him but sumo uh anybody who's wanting like a really good little book to read sumo it's by a chap called paul mcgee and sumo s-u-m-o um stands for shut up move on <laughs> um and it is such a great little book and it's not it's not heavy reading either it's not sort of like loads and loads of text there's pictures there's sort of like cartoony things there's um little phrases it's um a really 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 fabulous fabulous book and it's something that i recommend to everybody so i'm i'm really glad you're enjoying it jackie it's um it is a good book makes you think that's that's for certain um so uh can you use the slice on pastel map yes you can mary of course you can yeah yeah it's good on the on pastel map um yeah uh it it can it can really really help with sort of like textured fur uh that sort of stuff it's good really good I'm using Pastel Mat here and gone intentionally rogue. Well, that's good, Alison. Rogue's always good. It's always good to go a little bit rogue. We don't want to be conformists. I got, oh, I got um, shouted at this morning. <laughs> so I, I did have my mask on. Um, I was um, uh, filling up with diesel. And um, I, uh, I walked into the, I walked into the garage. I just walked in and um, I went, only two only two allowed in here get out i was like oh god okay <laughs> dived out i was like oh blimey so um it's um it makes me feel a little bit sad that people have kind of lost their kindness a little bit some in in some places but um i genuinely hadn't seen that there were only two allowed in the in the thing but uh, anyway so i was certainly told off but um at least I was wearing my mask. I blimmin' hate that thing. <laughs> I keep on uh, when we're out when we're shopping. I'm I'm gonna keel over in a minute. I'm 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 gonna faint. I can't breathe. <laughs> okay, so just taking these little bits out here as well. Just getting the the um, little bits of texture out in there. Um, boop, boop, boop. Right, can I but Bonnie will teach you to draw fab animals on Patreon. Oh, thanks, Cheryl. Oh, thank you so much. Got surprised by an albino toad. Oh my god, that would scare the living dead. I'm not um I'm I don't get freaked out by stuff really, but um things that that sort of are a bit hoppy and a bit I'm not that keen on on sort of like amphibian -y type things, reptile -y type things, you know, the, the sort of yeah. I, I'm more of a sort of a furry sort of person. Um, and I know they're not going to do me any harm, but the other thing I really worry about is that I'm going to step on the blooming thing, you know, because it's quite dark outside. <laughs> or I'm going to put my foot in my in my shoe and it's going to be sat in there. Or there's a mouse in there. Or oh, God, 
going to have to be really careful putting my shoes on now. I've done that before and I had horses put your foot in the welly and there's a mouse in the bottom. <sighs> That's not very nice. <laughs> Um, uh, maybe it is my prince. <laughs> maybe I should have a. Maybe I should have a bit of a. Yeah. Maybe I should pick him up and give him a bit of a kiss tonight. Maybe I should do that. That's a good idea, actually. I'm not sure I've got any time for a prince at the minute, to be honest. Uh, the gumminess on the end of the Tombow razor doesn't it bother you? The gumminess, um, you've got to um, take off the, um, you've got to take off the excess, uh, and then it kind of goes better. Or if it gets too much, you just cut the end off, um, and then you get a clean bit at the end. Um, plug in my earphones to hear properly. You might like to. Uh, uh, do you record using a camera or a video camera? Uh, at the moment, um, Cordy, I'm using a webcam for this. Um, I find it easier to use a webcam for the live streaming um, just because it kind of attaches straight into my computer and it, it just it just works quite well. But for my tutorials, I, in fact, I'll just grab it and I'll show you. Oops. For my tutorials, I use this. So this is the, it's a bit close, sorry. This is the, the Sony it's the uh, FDR AX53 um, and I record straight onto SD card uh, and it's great because I can I can also have it um, attached to my phone so I can have it um, recording via my phone so I can kind of see the um, see my phone you know see the image on my phone which is quite good uh, and the other thing is with the the um, webcam the webcam is probably about that it's literally there so it's the it's the length of a pencil away from the paper so it's not very far away from the paper um, with my uh, Sony it's about three foot away up in the air so it means I've got an awful lot I don't have to peer over stuff or gaze round things or you know contort myself into weird positions to be able to see the paper um, it means I can put it right up above me and it um, you know it doesn't it doesn't get in the way which is which is really really good because if you're recording for long hours um, you know if I'm doing a recording it's going to take me 40 hours to do a port to do a, a tutorial um, I you can get really really uncomfy if you're having to pee around a blooming camera that's in the way um, and plus it's it's better quality um, you know it is definitely better quality I've had a few issues oh I've got had a major issue with my um, the cat face tutorial honestly I'm, I think I mentioned it last week I'm such an idiot sometimes um, I unplugged I heard sound and I unplugged my microphone uh, no I didn't unplug my microphone I switched my Mac off because I was hearing this sound and of course my microphone was plugged into my Mac so I had something like two hours, something like that, of video footage with no... Well, it did have sound, but it was just like a big... All the way through. Um, so that was a bit of a pain. But, um, you know, it's it's much, much easier to use the Sony now for recording. And, and it's much better quality as well. Um, but, um, yeah, and I just go... I, I can plug it into my Mac and I can use it as a camcorder. And I have to use this thing called a cam link. Um, but it can get quite hot um, and it can kind of cut cut off when you least expect it. So I, I tend to use the, um, it's a Logitech 920 that I use, uh, you know, and that's what I use for a lot of, my, well, all of my, my first tutorials that I did. And then um, a couple of months ago, I started using the Sony, which is really, it is a really, really good camera. And it's made for taking video as well. Um, cause I was going to, I was going to use my DSLR, but, um, it, 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 there are some restrictions on it. So I, I bought the Sony, uh, instead and use that and I'm really, really happy with it. Um, that's okay, Joe. Um, oh, thank you, Melody. Bonnie, are you then moving from Patreon to Vivio? No, so Vimeo is a um, Vimeo is a video. Um, it's where you can upload your videos, so it's like a little bit like YouTube. 
um, but we but it's not free. YouTube is free. Vimeo is not free, but it's com it's private. Um, so it means that if I want to keep a, a, a video exclusive on Vimeo, I can. Um, on YouTube, there are ways of getting around it and being able to say, see exclusive content, which I'm not, not happy about because I think if people are paying for exclusive content, then they need to get what they pay for. Um, you know, so um, I'm not moving away from Patreon at all. No, I, I really like Patreon as a platform. Um, I know it can be a little bit um, not that user friendly sometimes, but it's definitely getting better. Um, uh, it started, they're starting to offer uh, annual memberships as well, which is something I'm kind of toying with, um, thinking about offering the annual memberships. Um, and you can also pay in your own currency now as well, which is good. So it's, it's they're listening to the creators. They're listening to, um, you know, what people want from it. So, and that, that's all really good. Um, <clears throat> I watch through my TV so I can turn the sound up. Ah, Jenny, do you watch the, um, the Vimeo ones through your TV as well? Cause that's really interesting. If you do, I'd, um, I'd like to I'd like to know how you've done that because I know some people have have um, found that a bit of a challenge. Spiders, oh god, yeah, spiders. <laughs> have you thought about getting any of your fabulous drawings put onto masks? No, Deborah, I haven't, um, and I'm not going to either. <laughs> I don't like using masks. Um, I'm not gonna. I, I I won't. I won't bore you with my thoughts, but no. Um, I'm just using um, the um, disposable ones at the minute. I do think the ones with the big, like the big laughing mouth and stuff like that. I think those are quite funny. Um, a bit, a bit scary when you kind of just come across somebody down an aisle and they're wearing one. But um, no, I, I've I've seen I've seen other people, um, other artists put their their drawings on masks and um, yeah, I think it's a nice idea. But no, it's just not something I want to do. Um, not sure I'm not sure which ones would fit anyway actually um I think mine is the same now I actually see your sliced oh right okay oh uh, yes because at one one angle it's it can actually be a little bit um it can look quite like it's not up that much um but a pepper, that's what brought me to your patreon I watched something on YouTube and I couldn't believe it was free and I realized it wasn't oh <laughs> That's so funny well do you know and that's the thing isn't it and people don't do it on purpose it's not well, well i'm sure some people do do it on purpose but you know i think the majority of people don't do it on purpose it's just a feature that that youtube allows um you know and um you, you know if they allow it then why not it's, it's a shame but you know that's that's how it is but i do have quite a lot of free content i do do a lot of free content so i, I obviously do my live draws i've got there's vinny up there there's you know, I'm starting, um, uh, I'm going to be starting doing like a drop-in, uh, um, two drop-in sessions a month that are going to be free, you know, for people just to kind of drop in, ask questions, you know, if they want any help on anything, you know, so I do, I do a huge amount for free anyway, and I, I, I need to do those things for free because that's what, that's what helps me. It sounds really weird, but, um, I don't like charging people anything really, and I know that I have to, um, you know, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to have a mortgage or anything like that. I look after my children. But um, to do the stuff for free enables me to feel better about charging people for stuff. And that's why, for me, I have to do stuff for free because it makes me feel, you know, OK. Um, very strange uh, going on. Um, what sort of microphone do I use? I have a um, a Rode NT USB, um, and it's got a, like a shock. It's sit, sitting in a shock mount, so you know if anything kind of bashes it or anything like that, hopefully it doesn't make a big noise. Um, but it's um, I wish I'd gone for the Rode straight away because I, I started off with a Snowball, a uh, blue Snowball, um, and then I ended up with a blue Yeti. And that kept on switching itself off, um, which again was no good. Um, and so I I bought a, a a proper one. I bought a Rode, and that's it. Is a very good microphone. Um, 
so as, as long as I keep speaking it just picks up my voice it's when I go quiet then it starts to pick up other things um, so I'm I'm not I'm not very good when it comes to sound I wish I knew a little bit better more about it because I think that's one of the biggest things when you start recording it's getting your sound quality right um, you know because it I think sound is one of the things that really can ruin uh, you know a video if you've got the poor quality sound and I know there are there's plenty of my videos that have got poor quality sound um, if you can right click on the screen it will have cast in the list just click and cast ah fab oh thanks Cheryl yeah it's a good it is a good it is a really really good um, microphone Right, so I'm going to bring a little bit more in there. I've just taken all of the pigment out and put it all back in again. <laughs> I'm going to take it all back out again. Um, just to make it a little bit more fluffy in there. And I'll do a little bit more on that ear, the outside of the ear, and then um, we'll start talking about golden fur. So I've got um, I've got a load of um, images that uh, people are sort of voting on at the minute for next month's tutorial, and I I, I think I think it might be the um, the Vimarana that's got the the most votes, which I'm quite excited about actually because they've got a very 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 unique colour and it's a rather a nice photograph as well so I'm hoping that we might be doing that next next month um, and then I've got some um, German Shepherd fur that I'm going to do as a focus and I'm going to do that on drafting film and I'm going to be using a blurred photograph um, to begin with on that which will be um, which will be interesting um, so it's when you look at something that's incredibly detailed the the, the first thing you the, well the first thing you do is you, you just sort of want to run away really um, but once you sort of like start to think about the process and how things are going to work it, it, it's it's quite exciting actually thinking about how you're going to do it but working from a blurred photo to begin with means that you don't get bogged down with all of the detail and you can just concentrate on your tonal qualities um, and then your colour and get all of the base colours and you know tones down. Um, and then um, because it's on drafting film, you can then put all of that texture and detail in afterwards. So um, I'm really, really looking forward to doing that one because there's loads of gorgeous colours and like tons and tons of fur detail in there so that's going to be a good one get yourself a print get yourself a print send the kids out to work and then you can drink tea at biscuits and draws <laughs> that sounds really nice Cheryl I quite like the idea of that yeah <laughs> um oh right Lisa okay I don't know who to contact in the UK. That's the thing. I I, um, I I just sort of make it up as I go along and then kind of watch YouTube videos and hope that it will work. Thank you, Cheryl. I don't suppose you know what webcam it is, Bonnie. Yes, it's I'm using the Logitech um, 920. Um, that's OK. <laughs> Thank you for showing us yours. That's OK. So the trick with drawing is draw all, then erase all, then draw again. <laughs> that's exactly it. That is exactly the trick with drawing put it all in take it all out put it all back in again take it all out that's exactly um how how to do it it's the it's the hokey cokey method uh, but it works <laughs> so um we're okay with that so i'm just coming in here a little bit more down uh into this bit here I've, the other thing that I do an awful lot, which is, um, it can get really annoying actually, is um, if, I, if I put like a mark in somewhere, I'll actually incorporate it in my drawing, even if it's not supposed to be there. 
Um, you know, so if I put sort of like a bit of something in there, I'll be like, oh, and I'll draw around it and incorporate it into the piece. And it's like, I don't even know why I don't why I do that. Um, if I just take a little bit out there. Um, and then I think what we'll do is we'll get that slice in again and we'll just put a few little stray hairs in over there. Yeah, so it's um, back to school this week for, um, for my youngest. Um, so that's been a little bit of a shock. <laughs> I think for him probably more than me because I'm up early anyway but uh, yeah he's used to getting up at three o'clock in the afternoon where he's got to get up at seven now <laughs> so uh, yeah so I've done the school run this week which has been yeah it's been all right it's been all right it's quite nice actually to sit in the car for a, for a couple of hours and have a bit of thinking time but um, yeah I bought him a bus pass he's going on the bus next week so um, so that's all good but uh, he's um, he's gone into sixth form and uh, he doesn't have to wear a uniform anymore so he's got to wear some like really smart smart clothes oh and he looks so he just looks so lovely he looks so so smart um very proud of him bless him and <laughs> I've got a text from my other son um the uh, I think it was yesterday I bought a car, Mama. I bought a new car. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, I was thinking about buying a new car, and when I bought, I bought one. Crazy boy. Right. Okay. So let's do it. Oops. Let's do a little bit more down the edge there. I'm going to use um, some walnut brown. I think. Um, used to be obsessed with the hokey cokey, but I don't know something. That's so funny, Alison. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, well, actually, our school's not so bad. Because um, I said to him, is everybody wearing masks? He was like, nope, nobody's wearing masks. They're not, they don't have to wear masks in the corridors. They don't have to wear masks in the, in the um, uh, you know, in the classrooms. And the teachers have got, like, little safety hubs at the front or whatever. But the children aren't they're not having to wear anything i mean that might all change i don't know so i'm uh yeah so he's he's not wearing a mask at all um you know i mean it looks pretty pretty normal actually i have to say when i'm taking him to school and i'm, I'm kind of driving away um you know all of the children look like they did last year so which is quite good but um yeah i don't know whether it will change i don't know but uh, at the moment he's not having to having to wear one which is good because he's asthmatic so um da -da -da -da. oh that's all right cheryl i have a sign that says what if the hokey cokey really is what it's all about <laughs> i do, i i i think it is isn't it i think i think it is all about the hokey cokey isn't it in out in out <laughs> Put it in, take it out. That's uh, that's how I do all of my drawing. Just get all of the pigment in and then just take it. And I'm sure people are following my tutorials and they're like, they spent three hours putting a load of pigment in. And then I come along with my eraser and take it all out again. And I bet they're absolutely screaming at the, sc at the screen going, what on earth are you doing? We just spent ages putting that in and you're taking it all back out again. <laughs> so, right, I'm just going to take a little bit more out of here here just to bring in that texture um, what time are we oh gosh i'm going to talk about golden fur because my daughter is making me tea and she said if i don't finish at half past eight it's going in the bin um so i don't want that to happen <sighs> right okay just do a little bit more on this side here getting some of that nice um, darkness in there and then I'll bring my golden retriever who I, I've, I'm still working on it a lot um, 
there's bits of it I'm happy with, bits of it that need need an awful lot more work. And like I say, it keeps on the colour keeps fading, which is irritating. Um, but I can just talk to you about some of the um, pencils that I'm using to get that golden fur. Um, I've seen a couple of alpacas finished as well. A few people have finished their alpacas and they're looking amazing. Um, cool. Okay. So that's looking all right. I know. It's gone. It, well, we're all having fun, you see, Cheryl. That's the whole, that's the whole thing. <laughs> Uh, right, so I'm going to move that there, put that there, put that there, find some of these colours that I've been using. Persian orange. Um, let's get that going under. That one. Not that one. Not that one. That one. And that. Right, okay. So I'm just going to bring the um, uh, Golden Retriever out. Cats flying everywhere. Right, okay. Um, so put them there. Just move the alpaca over. And bring that into there. I've got that focused. Yeah, I think she's focused there. That's fine. Right, so, um, yeah, so she's quite an orangey um, retriever. Um, and it's. Now, if I just push that up a little bit. Okay. Yeah, so she's quite an orangey retriever, but the pencils that I've used to kind of get that, and I'll just show you them. And the ones that I've really, really liked, and this is the um, this is the light fast paper that I'm using. So I'm putting an initial layer down of this, which is the light, and I'm using light fast mostly on this on this one. This is the flesh pink, um, and this is a really, really, really fantastic color, really fantastic color. Um, and this is this is the um, the 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 one color that I've used on the base of this all over, um, and this is what I'm thinking is probably the best thing uh, when you're using um, uh, sort of smooth paper, you know, hot press paper. I think the best thing to do is to get a layer down quite using sort of medium pressure i think get a layer of sort of like something like this so it, it gives you a somewhere smooth to work on um no the dark these dark areas here no so the other amazing pencil in the light fast range is the mars black and that's the one that i said was quite similar to the new luminance dark flesh and it's like um it's like a um a real ready black and I've used these, uh, I've used this in here. Oh, and the other one as well that I've used, which is another really good one. Hang on, let me just find it. Where is it? Come on, where are you? Oh, gosh. It's the Merlot, but I don't know where it's gone. Oops, that one. Where are you? No, I can't find it. It's the um, it's the Merlot, which is like a, a really deep, another really deep red. Um, and I've used this um, in these orangey parts with the Persian orange. So I put the first layer of the um, the the flesh pink down, and then I put go in with the with the Persian orange, which is a really really fabulous. It's like a brownie orange. It's just it's perfect, absolutely perfect for this coloured dog. Um, and then what I use, um, if I want some yellowy bits, I can I can use the wheat in over the top. So I can bring a little bit of the um, the wheat in over the top of the orangey colours. And what that's going to do is it's going to lightly burnish as well, um, you know, which is great. And then I've got my um, where's that eraser? 
<clears throat> this little Derwent eraser that I've been using and it's just fantastic so I just come in over the top and I can create some of these little highlights Got a little brush on the end there so I can just kind of work these little highlighty bits in um, you know and, and I can kind of work work that and it's it's just so good um, and then then the next secret weapons are the studios and I've got these ones here that I'm using. So I, what I don't want is that I don't want it to end up being just too orange, just all those warm orangey colours. Um, so I bring in a little bit of the raw umber. So this is the studio raw umber. And the, the studios don't work that brilliantly over the top of other colours. But um, you can use quite a lot of pressure because they're so hard. And it means that I can actually get some sort of subtle colour in over the top of the orangey colours to kind of tone it back a little bit so it's not all in your face orange. And then I'm using the, the Copper Beach is another really, really good colour. Um, and there's a, quite a lot of the Copper Beach in here. And I'm just kind of um, working with the Light Fast and the Studios together to kind of bring in these lovely shades and everything around here. Um, so oh that sounds that sounds exciting joanne um thank you cheryl uh oh thank you jackie uh, um quite i've listened to uh it's the derwent color for, oh this is the derwent light fast paper uh you can buy you can buy directly from derwent um am i working on a flat table or an angled drawing board so i'm working on a 60 degree angle here um, I can't work flat. I, I find it very, very difficult to, to work flat. So I'm working on a 60 degree. And this is the light fast paper, yes. Um, it's, um, I, I really, really like it. Uh, but I'm finding, I, I'm finding that it works best with the light fast pencils. Surprise, surprise. Um, but it's a, it's a very nice paper. And I tell you what, it takes a lot of, um, sort of um what does it take a lot of i went completely wrong in this area here and it took so much abuse i've rubbed it out i've used the tape i've used the um i've used the slice tool i've used an eraser i've gone back in again with the colors um it's taken a huge 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 amount of abuse and it takes an awful lot of layers as well um you know it, it's a very 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 good paper very good paper it's certainly worth the amount that they're charging for it i think um but i th i think I, i'm just trying i'm just kind of getting to grips with it really and working out the best way of layering um dog fur looks like it's got few layers um I, well yes so I, i'm trying to get it so that it's quite uh, subtle and soft um this area here has actually got quite a lot of layers um, we're probably talking about maybe 10 layers here but I'm using very 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 light pressure um, and the layers kind of they go in and then I'll sort of use that little eraser to sort of pick out some little bits because I, I, oh God, I find this area on a dog's head so hard um, you've got to get that depth of field you've got to get um, you know you've got to get the feeling that it's kind of coming down here and then it's coming back out again and I, I, I really, really struggle with this area here and, and I can spend quite a long time, um, you know, on working on something like this to try and get it actually, you know, how it should be. Um, and I might kind of go in and then I might decide that, oh, hang on a second, you know what, it, I haven't got the eye quite right. The eye's sort of throwing it out a little bit. Um, so then, and the other thing that I find a real challenge is getting the distance between here and you know that little sort of fuzzy bit on a dog's face here. So the uh, the distance from here to here, I always get wrong. Um, and I've had to kind of measure that today a couple of times just to make sure that I've actually got it right. You know, if you've got the angle of something um, not quite right. So it's there's there's um there's a lot of things that kind of can throw stuff out so this can all all be absolutely perfect but can look a little bit weird because other things aren't quite right and with this one the nose is throwing me out on this one because the nose is very very slightly um uh twisted to the side so that's throwing me out and annoying me um 
Oh, yes, I need to go for my tea. Thanks so much, Joanne. <laughs> um, what pencil did you use for the darkest parts by the ear? So this down here, I used the, um, the Mars Black. This is the Mars Black here. And it is a, a gorgeous, 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 deep, deep, deep red. And it's very, very similar to the um, Dark Flesh. I mean, this isn't. This has still got quite a lot of work to do down here. It's more depth and everything, but um, I had to put this nose area in because it, it was just comp everything was just being thrown out, um, you know. So this this portrait actually, if I just, I don't think I can go that far. I'll be able to go up there a little bit so you can see the whole thing. <coughs> Let's see if it's actually in focus. Um, yeah, so this portrait is a whole, um, a whole body, um, and you can see here. I think you can see that I'm I'm working on a um, uh, an angle. Um, yes, yes, Deborah, it's the uh, Persian orange. This is the Persian orange. And you can see how this is on a on an A3 piece of paper. So I, I kind of nearly finished the head, kind of, and then I've got the whole of the body to do. So, um, but I've I've you know I think it's going to be a really lovely piece once I've finished. Um, but yeah, so those are those are some really really good color combinations for uh, quite a dark um, golden retriever. So, uh, yes, I'm going to go for my tea now. So thank you all for joining me um, yet again. Um, it's been um, been very, uh, very enjoyable. Uh, next week, we could next week we could work on the alpaca's eyes, maybe. Let's bring the little alpaca in there again. Um, we could maybe work on the alpaca's eyes next week. Um, I've just had a text through for my daughter <laughs> saying, remember half past. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, yeah, so I think I think working on the eyes next week on the um, little alpaca. Um, and then I'm going to have a message through in a minute saying I'll put it in the bin. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I will see you all. I'll see you all next week. Thank you all so much for joining me. Um, and um, oh, yes, Paul, Paul, I, we can do that. I can do that with you. Not a problem. We can have another what, uh, another Zoom. Um, thanks ever so much, everybody. And uh, I'll see you next week. See you later. Bye.